Hello everyone, I'm Tequila Sunset, and today, it's early in the morning again, I'm back with yet another cup of coffee, and yet another DLC speculation video, this time we are focusing on Nurgle, so, given that they uh, are, we're working with the same template we had before, the one that CA basically provided with their Shadows of Change update, they also said it would be applying for the Thorns of Decay, basically, each of the three DLC factions here, Empire, Nurgle, and Dwarves, they're going to be getting a Legendary Lord, a Legendary Hero, one generic lord and a generic hero, along with a few units. I think they said like 16 total, uh, something like that. Also three R wars each. So we're going to be focusing mostly on like lords and also some units as well. Um, again, I'm not like super up on the lore for Nurgle. So there may be some of you out there who are more knowledgeable than I am. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe there's like um, uh, another unit or at least another idea I have. Or maybe you guys just have uh, interesting ideas that... Uh, on how certain things can be implemented, certain characters and whatnot. And so if you want to, you can just feel free to let me know, share your thoughts, see if uh, in case there's anything I missed, or maybe there's another wrinkle that you can provide. That'd be pretty interesting to see, because um, the response to my uh, recent, my uh, earlier video about the Empire was actually really nice. A lot of people had some really cool ideas, so that was pretty fun. So yeah, happy to see a uh, discussion in the comments. So first of all, this one, since it is with Empire, and as I said before, I really do think that they are going to, and it seems like everybody else thinks that too, they're going to center this around Tamarkan. So Tamarkan, known as the Maggot Lord, the son of the great Kurgan, master of hosts, bringer of desolation, and the favorite of Nurgle. So he was basically a, like a giant, like as it says here, a giant corpse maggot. So what that means is like, he can just like take over and possess the bodies of other mortals. So, and just like, that's like it's ho his host basically. So with his story that culminated in him leading a big giant chaos host, uh, to try to take the city of Nuln. He, in his final form, was in the body of an ochre tyrant, tyrant named Karaka Break Mountain. So, this is him, and that's a toad dragon, by the way. We're going to get to that in a second. And, um, first of all, you can just see, like, that's an ogre tyrant. Like, the, basically the size of the ogre tyrants in our game, and this thing is way, toad dragon's way bigger than it. That's a, it's a big-ass monster. It's going to be very fun, I think. But anyway, so that's Tamarkan. He's got that big-ass axe. And, uh, so yeah, that's his thing. I see him as coming in as just like an incredibly powerful just combatant. Um, so one thing with the Nurgle, it's just that their current state in the game, in their meta. So they are very good at killing infantry. Uh, Kugath, he's got like his motor shots. So do the uh, Soul Grinders also have their little, it basically functions as a mortar. Um, Kugath himself, along with Great Unclean Ones, is also a very powerful, uh, which one, where is it? Why am I? Yeah, very powerful mortis engine. So... One of them, actually, I think that's the highest Mortis Engine in the game, at least as far as land stuff goes. Um, so, yeah, they're really good at clearing out infantry. Kugath himself is a really powerful duelist, as are the Great Unclean Ones. Their problem is, like, they're just really slow. So, because of that, but they also don't really have ranged options. Their range options are really limited, just the Marauder Horsemen. And their monsters, they're not really, like... Like, Beasts of Nurgle just aren't really good combatants here. Plague Toads, their monsters, like, basically like a monster's cavalry, like, Warbeast kind of unit. They're an anti-infantry unit. Chaos Spawn aren't great into large stuff as well. Uh, Plague Drones, they just die really, really fast. They're very squishy. So, and they really aren't good at dealing with, like, large single entities. Especially because even the stuff that they do have that does have good stats, like Kugath is really strong. Uh, it's not the great clean ones, Giants. They're really slow, so it's hard for them to actually get engagements onto, say, like a dragon or something like that. So, I think that, like, Toad Dragons, I imagine, uh, for their general roster, so, good at killing infantry, they struggle at uh, dealing with large stuff, and also, they basically struggle against anything that, that can't deal with the Kugak heal plot. That's basically all they have going for them. Um, or, like, they rely, they lean, uh, rely a lot on, like, just taking, like, double exalted heroes in Nurgle, maybe on horseback, to try to kill single entities. But even then, that's, like, an okay option for its cost. So, I do think, like, Toad Dragons would be really nice uh, if they can come in and just be good at dealing with other big, large stuff. Because the way I imagine them, because, like, you can look at them and this size, and, uh, basically, Tamarkan, he's going to be, like, a just a toad dragon just like souped up because now he's like a legendary lord on top of a toad dragon so i'm more or less him and the toad dragons kind of go in line in terms of my vision with them so my vision they'll have huge hp pools uh really good melee attack and weapon strength so like fat dps right basically like in like a nurgle flavored um lizardman kind of like the dread Sorian. Uh, they wouldn't have a Howd on their back because he's going to have just a Rider. But yeah, like huge HP pools. Dredge Storm's got 15,000. 15, uh, huge HP pools, huge weapon strength, uh, good melee attack. 
I don't think it'll be as fast as a Dread Saurian because it is a Nurgle monster, but it should be faster than just like the regular like Great and Clean ones or Kugat. So maybe like something like like Stegadon territory, like 48, 50 speed, something like that, mid 40s to low 50s. So at least it's at least it's not super fast, so it's not like out of theme with Nurgle, but at least it's better able to reach its targets than somebody like Kugath or a Great and Clean one is. So it's gonna be better at dealing with large single entities while still being good at like clearing out um, like infantry and like monstrous infantry, cavalry, just like a really good, like the Dread Soaring, just a really good generalist beat stick um, that has a ton of DPS. So like, uh, where was that other, there was this other thing about Toad Dragons. I wanna talk about like their acidic breath. I wanted to get really quick, where is it? Yeah, while its tainted breath is so corrosively foul, it can liquefy flesh and wither steel in mere moments. So I do think it makes sense for it to have like um, at least poison damage, if not like a unique kind of poison. That would actually be pretty cool. But at the very least, poison damage and also armor sundering on its attacks. So while um, this toad dragon, so while the uh, toad dragon itself is obviously going to have really strong armor piercing values, at least the very well should. Um, at the very, there's a lot of stuff on Nurgle, like especially their infantry or even like chaos spawn or something like that, who do struggle against or do have pretty low armor piercing values. Forsaken as well. Um, so, Armor Sundering can't help those guys out, so you pair them with infantry to just, like, bunker bust the flank of, like, armored holding you infantry. So that can actually be pretty nice. Um, and also just, like, works in theme with what the monster is. So, yeah, Armor Sundering, fat damage, huge HP pools, um, big slow target, so it still is, like, vulnerable to, uh, like, armor, like, uh, like, mass range and stuff like that, like, bow fire and stuff. So there is counterplay to it, but it's also just really powerful. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And basically... Because Tamarkan, he has a uh, unique Toad Dragon mount that's called, named, uh, basically, I guess, what, Booby Bolos or something? So, yeah, however that's pronounced. So, yeah, so it's basically just, like, an extra powerful version of a Toad Dragon. There really doesn't seem to be, like, much else unique about it. Just, yeah, just a big, strong Toad Dragon uh, that's extra big and strong. So, yeah, um, that would be for him. I'm trying to, like, his war gear... They have, he had this like rune blade that was basically just going from a, uh, yeah, Slaneshi champion. Um, there doesn't seem to be much information about it. Not to mention it did, like, yeah, it shattered in combat with the Ogre Tyrant, Karaka Breakman, that he ends up taking his final form for. So like, I do think that it would be, make more sense if they went with his Black Cleaver item, his, as his weapon, as his special weapon. So this one was given to him, yeah, by the Chaos Dwarves, because he made a pact with, um, I think it was Drazo, if was the one he, uh, Chaos Dwarf uh, Lord he made a pact with. Because Drazo, with, along with a big host of like war machines and stuff like that, was um, fighting with Tamarkan in their fight uh, when they took the uh, invasion to Nome. So he got a black cleaver, cleaver. So basically the big thing about this is like a giant double-handed axe and the strange grayish fumes that the massive weapon exudes when swung are foully poisonous, which pleased the Maggot Lord greatly. So, I really hope that they don't make this into a Mortis engine, because that sounds like, um, at least the easy option is to just go with a Mortis engine. Because right now, they have Kugath and the Exalted Great and Clean one, both of which are Mortis engines. And it'd just be kind of, I don't know, just kind of cringe if they just had another Mortis engine act tacked in here. It's like the same, same shit, just different flavor, or different uh, skin, almost. Um, so in my opinion, I really wish that, I hope they go for, like, some kind of AoE debuff, something to that effect that's, like, decent, just different from a Mortis engine. That would just make him more interesting and, uh, set him apart from, uh, Kugath, other than just, uh, yet another Mortis engine. So, I hope they don't go for a Mortis engine here. Some kind of AoE debuff, and also, like, a damage spike or something like that, um, would be nice. Or, like, it can, like, an active ability that imbues him with some kind of contact effect. That uh, drastically debuffs like the armor and like combat stats of whatever he's fighting. Like almost like um, I'm trying to think. Like give it like ninety second duration or cooldown. Like thirty second duration, ninety second cooldown, where it's like minus twenty four to melee attack, melee defense, and like minus thirty armor. There you go. Like something like that. That's like um, like a big melee debuff. So that way you can just um, uh, just give him a leg up in a combat situation. Like something like that. I think would be more like nicer than. Um, just a mortis engine um and yeah then there's this mount so yeah something like that you can give him like maybe um you could give him some kind of ability that's tied to um like if he goes below 20 percent hp he can like feast on a unit and gain hp that way if another if like another unit that is itself low in hp so like if him and another and something he's fighting is like below 20 percent health or something like that then he can like feast on that thing and computer almost kind of like how um where is Mr. Morgur the Shadow Gave? 
Uh, he has his, um, not this one, not this one, not this one. Here we go. The Spirit Essence of Chaos. Basically, when there's a unit around him that is, like, really low in HP, um, he can, like, kill it and then summon a unit Chaos Bond uh, there. So, something similar to that effect, except, except instead of kill, uh, summoning a Chaos Bond, it heals him. Or something like that. I don't know. Um, something to that effect, I think, could be uh, interesting. And there is, I know, like, in, especially for multiplayer, like, Healing is so dominant in the current multiplayer meta, it gets kind of boring, the idea of like, oh, let's just add more healing stuff. Unfortunately, like, it does also feel kind of inevitable when we're talking about Nurgle. Like, I don't really, like, I don't know how else you would implement something like this. You know what I mean? Maybe you can do something interesting on campaign for it, but at least as far as battle uh, abilities or something like that. Because this, like, the possession thing is, like, pretty central to Tamarkan, just who he is. Because, like, he is a mutant maggot that, like, eats... Like, like eats, eats and occupies a host, right? So, I don't know. Um, so, I don't know how else to do it. So, But, yeah, that could be a, a way to implement that. So, yeah, we talked about you. We talked about Toad Dragon. Just a fat damage beat stick. Um, elite monster. Going to be very expensive, obviously. But, like, this is, like, this is the sort of thing that could be, a, like, a Dritz or like, a big centerpiece unit. I think they could be really cool. While also giving um, Nurgle something that they really need, which is something that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, big monsters uh, more effectively than, like, Kugath and stuff. Because it would be more mobile. So, as for Legendary Lords, um, so a lot of people were t are talking about Epidemus. It's, he seems to be, as far as like ner other Nurgle characters that aren't in the game yet, he seems to be like a very noteworthy one in their lore. The problem is, I looked the guy up, like he's just, he's just like an accountant. Like he just seems really dull. Like there's just like, it's just an accountant guy. I don't know. Like, I don't know what he would provide that's, like, particularly in uh, interesting. Other than just, like, hey, this guy gives you, like, I don't know, support buffs. Like, all right. Like, he doesn't have an interesting mount. It's just, he seems like he's not going to be inter an interesting combatant. He's not going to be an interesting caster. Like, I don't know what he really gives you that's actually provides, like, flavor from a lore perspective or anything like that. So, I don't know. I kind of hope that they go instead with this guy here, uh, Sail the Faithless. So, or also known as the Twisted Seer of the Waste. So the big thing with him, he's almost like a Littlefinger type. Or he's like, he's like Mac from It's Always Sunny, right? He plays all the sides to make sure that he comes out on top no matter what. So, yeah, he doesn't uh, pick with like a single, like, like Zinch or uh, Sunesh or Nurgle, whatever. He kind of pays lip service. Yeah, he pays lip service to many. So, in my opinion, um, they don't even really specify like a specific lore of magic that he does. But I think it would be interesting if you just had him as with like a mixed spell kit with all of like the um, lords of magic that are associated with the chaos gods. So like death for Nurgle, um, shadows for Slanesh, fire and metal for Zinch, and uh, obviously Korn doesn't have one. So like just mix his spell kit with um because they get six spells. So something from there you can mix him a spell kit like maybe two from fire, uh, two from death. And then one from each of Shadows and uh, Metal. Like, you can do something interesting like that. Give them a good mix of, like, damage dealing, like, crowd clearing spells. Um, like, buffs and, like, uh, or, like, hexes and things like that. You can make him, like, a really fun, like, versatile and powerful caster. That would basically just be, like, a legendary hero chaos sorcerer caster. So, I think something like that would be uh, more interesting. He also gets an interesting mount. Because in the, um, to my knowledge, in the, um, like, the Tamarkan story when he's uh, waging war against Nolan... Uh, this guy gets, like, an actual, like, mammoth with, like, some sort of, like, really cool, like, ivory, like, um, what's the right word for, like, the, like, ivory throne kind of thing? Whatever's on top of the mammoth that you're sitting on, howda, or whatever. Um, so, yeah, you can actually have a cool, like, mammoth mount for him that can make, would give CA an opportunity to buff mammoths, by the way. Um, because mammoths right now, like, for Norska, mammoths are kind of pretty weak and underwhelming. They just don't do enough damage for, like, how easy it is to just shoot them to pieces. So, yeah, just give him better collision attacks so they kill infantry as well as they should. Uh, and give him a uh, unique, uh, uniquely skinned uh, mammoth mount that could be pretty cool. So, like, a caster on a mammoth, like, he would be expensive, like, really expensive. Because at that point, you have really strong anti-infantry and also um, a caster as well with, like, a mixed spell kit. But that makes for, like, a really cool character, in my opinion. Um, yeah, also his war gear, Viper Staff. Is a foul heirloom of the Dolgan tribe. This dark iron staff is entwined with serpents which come alive at the wielder's command, glowing venom dripping from their fangs as they strike with formidable speed and power to defend their master and slay his enemies. So, honestly, the best way to implement this, I think, would be Lizardman. 
Arc of Sotic, basically something similar to the Arc of Sotic ability where yeah, it's an active ability, you cast it, and then in an AoE around it, it applies this um this the um, applies this like damage over time dealing effect, a poison effect. So something like that I think could be uh like the best way to implement that. I think that would be interesting. If they want to implement like a, or I don't think it doesn't sound like a swarm anyway, so I don't think you should have like actual swarm summons for this. And not gonna lie, at this point, like with how many DLCs the Skaven have gotten, I would be surprised if like like if they wanted to implement swarm summons or something like that, they would have done it by now. Like with all the Skaven DLCs we've had, or Lizardman DLCs because they technically have swarm for them too. Um, so yeah, I think that kind of AOE similar to the Arc of Sotex AOE, I think that would be how they implement this. So the other item, Shulkane's teeth. This corpse skin bag contains numerous sigil, sigil est etched teeth and fangs. Sail has torn from the skulls of various wizards he has defeated in his unholy career. Not the le not least of all, those of his first master, Shalkin. Should his magic go awry, Sail may hurl a handful of the teeth as part of a treacherous curse against an ally to divert the wrath of the winds of magic. So this reminds me a bit of Dark Elves. Let's go Thor of Dark. Uh, power of Darkness. So what it does is you can cast it on yourself or an ally. It does damage to them. This is basically like one and a half spirit leech worth of damage. And it imbues power recharge rate and reserves per second. So at first I was thinking like it would be kind of cool where like if say somebody casts like a Fate of Buna on your Chaos Knights, right? As a, you're a Chaos Knight of Nurgle. And this guy casts the, um, this, uh, I guess this ability, whatever ability, like Shulkin's Teeth ability, Onto like a Nurgling or something like that. And it diverts the Veda Buna onto the um, Nurglings. So that would be, could be kind of interesting and very interesting and thematic. But it seems like I don't know if Sia would be able to implement that well. Especially when you take into account like, for lack of a better term, like external stuff. External spells like a bombardment or something like that. Like if you're in the middle of a Searing Doom and you cast this, I don't know how, or like a Burning Head. I don't know how they're going to be able to really do that. Uh, or at least do that in a way that works and is like actually good so instead it could be kind of like uh power of darkness except instead of and abuse the damage on whatever you cast on except instead of boosting your reserves per second and power recharge it like reduces the power recharge of your uh opponents so they don't recharge magic as well and it uh like increases cooldowns all of their cooldowns by like i don't know 15 30 seconds map wide uh probably 30 seconds if it's like an act since it's an active ability i think that's fine um, so something like that could actually be pretty solid. Like, that's something that actually could work. And you can just cast it onto, like, some Nurglings. Something that you're fine with them taking damage. And that's thematic with this character and also could, um, makes it interesting, in my opinion. And actually could be useful. Especially, like, if you're, um, if you're worried, like, if you know, like, see, like, a final transmutation, worried about, like, a big final transmutation blob is about to get hit or something like that from an enemy, enemy metal caster, you can cast this and then that, like, sets their, resets their cooldowns and, um, hurts their ability to regenerate magic anyway. So something like that could be really interesting. So you get this guy. He's on a big, like a big, awesome, uh, unique man, mammoth mount. He has a unique mixed spell kit um, and some cool items here. So I think this guy could actually be way cooler than just some fucking accountant. Like no offense, no offense to any accountants in the audience. Uh, I love you guys, but uh, I don't know. It's a uh, Warhammer through. Warhammer seems like a more suited to somebody like this guy. So yeah, I think he would be way more interesting. Um, on to some other units. We already did cover the Toad Dragon. That's your, gonna be your big centerpiece uh, unit. We just covered it because we were talking about booby bolos here. But um, something like Bile Trolls are probably gonna be brought into the game. So Bile Trolls, so I'm gonna talk about them and Plague Ogres together. It says Nurgle already does have stuff like Chaos Spawn, and they also have Plague Toads. So I wanna try to like find a way, and also Pox Riders, I wanna try to find a way to implement these kind of sort of like monstrous multi-model units in a way that's interesting rather than just be different flavors of each other. So the thing with Chaos Spawn, or the thing with Plague Toads is they're like a relatively cheap anti-infantry piece, right? Chaos Spawn are a very durable sort of basically just source of mass that doesn't route and is just really, really durable. It has a lot of staying power. So there is that. So. With Plague Ogres and Vile Trolls, the way I'd like to imagine it is like Plague Ogres can be sort of like um, the cheaper version, basically, cheaper variant of like um, basically a Nurgle marked Ogre Bull, except what you can do is you can give them great weapons like what the man eaters have. So they're basically uh, Nurgle marked Ogre Bulls, except they have armor piercing and anti large attack. So obviously their cost would be more expensive uh, in accordance with that, but they would be relatively cheap. Compared to say like Chaos Spawn, who are eleven hundred, they could maybe be like eight fifty, eight hundred or eight fifty or something like that, and you can um, 
they would still be like, have counterplay because they'd be like lightly armored. They'd be big enough so that you can easily shoot them. And they'd be lightly armored. So they're vulnerable to range, uh, vulnerable to spears, and uh, vulnerable to, um, like say, like cavalry charges in the rear or something like that. So you still have counterplay to them, but also they give Nurgle again something that they really do need, which is an, an anti-large piece. So, and this would be like something rather ubiquitous that can, they can post because they'd be, um, they can um, bring into bear because they're relatively cheap. So I think that could be interesting for the uh, Plague Ogres. Battle Trolls, on the other hand, so first of all, one thing about these guys is, here, furthermore, their ability to heal fresh injury is less than that of their kin, like regular Trolls. So they would have like less regeneration than a regular Troll, or even no regeneration. But at the same time, it says, their touch is a lethal poison, and their corrosive bile rots away living flesh in seconds. So they've got corrosive like bile and poisonous as well. So they could do poison and armor sundering attack uh, damage on their melee attacks, which could provide an interesting foil as something that's unique from like Chaos Spawn or Plague Ogres or Plague Toads. Plague Toads. So that could be something that's um, interesting for them. So yeah, so there's, that's how I think that like the Plague Ogres and Bile Trolls could be implemented. Um, so they have a lot of like, and these guys would be like intermediate cost as well, maybe. Um, maybe you can have them be, uh, green skins, green skins, green skins. Maybe be like around the cost of like river trolls or just regular trolls or something like that. Because they have less healing than trolls. So um, reduce their healing, maybe reduce their d like DPS or something. But they also have poison and armor sundering. Or they can be like river trolls where like they have regular troll damage output. No healing, but and instead of overwhelming odor, they have like poison and um, armor sundering attacks. Like something like that I think could be uh, interesting for them. And for... The rest of them stuff. Okay, so we've got those covered. Now, Rot Knights. So Rot Knights, I imagine, is being basically like to, for Nurgle, what Skull Crushes are for um, Korn. Basically, an armor elite armor piercing and anti-large unit. First of all, by the way, um, they would be very expensive because they're very elite. Skull Crushers do need a buff. They really are not, like, 62 speed is really slow. Uh, they could also use maybe more DPS um, for their cost because they're so expensive. So, yeah, please, Korn buffs, please. Um, but for Nurgle, I do think they should get basically Skull Crushers, but good. Skull Crushers of, Nur of Nurgle, but good. So that's what I imagine, like, Rot Knights be being. Um, basically, armor-piercing, anti-large elite stats, elite durability. So, like, really, really, um, yeah, really, lots of armor, lots of hell HP, and just um, super tanky, super uh, killy, I guess. <laughs> killy, especially against large, but also really expensive. So you're getting a lot, but you also got to pay for a lot, pay a lot to get it. So yeah, that I think would be really cool, just like an elite uh, anti-large cavalry unit, uh, monstrous cavalry unit, because their um, their mounts are supposed to be like semi-demonic. I think basically like um, like um, chaos uh, war be uh, war horses, but like they've been kind of twisted by Nurgle, I guess. So something like that would be uh, really interesting, I think. Okay, and finally, okay. Pestigors are basically like Nurgle marked Pestigors. So, because they're supposed to have, like, where is it? Like, Pestigors possess an enormous fortitude in combat. They often scavenge and wear a surprisingly substantial amount of armor for Beastmen. So, that's basically what Pestigors are for Beastmen. Like, the reason why they're more armored, like, in, um... I just pulled the Beastmen roster really quick. The reason why they're more armored than Gores and Ungores is because they're the ones who, like, take all the armor for themselves from their um, loot. So, that's why. And that's why they have the armor bit, the Great Axes, because, again, they take the biggest and strongest uh, weapons. So, like, the thing is, because as I've said, Nurgle's already really good at killing infantry, and, like, you don't really need these guys, so they would be tankier than regular Bestigors, so maybe they'd be, uh, better, because Bestigors actually aren't that good for Beastmen. Beastmen are good overall, but Bestigors are pretty weak. Um, but Bestigors, like, they don't want really to give Nurgle something that they need. Like, they have tanky infantry, they have armor, they have infantry killing, they have plenty of that, but, yeah, so I don't know. I think you could bring them in just for flavor, I guess. Uh, CA is probably going to bring them in. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they, I would be surprised if they weren't in there because it just seems like such an obvious choice. But I really don't think they give that much. So yeah, you can bring these guys in, but I also think you should get uh, Pestigore Raiders so that are basically like Ungor Raiders marked by Nurgle. Gives them they can have basically the same damage output and range profile, but like with poison attacks, obviously. So something like that I think would be a lot interesting. Now Nurgle, obviously, because the thing with Nurgle is like they just they tunnel vision their roster design so hard into, like, all of our shit's tanky and durable. But the problem is, like, because, like, if you have, like, Chaos Warriors and Mark of Nurgle, it actually reduces melee attack, so it reduces their DPS. So they hold really well in the sense that it takes forever to kill them, but it's, like, they don't hold for anything. They don't have, like, a backline unit. 
They don't have back lines that they're holding for. Like Silver and Guard, uh, Longbeard, stuff like that, they're holding infantry, but they hold for a reason because you have a bunch of DPS right behind them. Nurgle doesn't have that. So, in my opinion, um, Ungor Raiders would... First of all, they're not good enough as a range unit to, like, alter Nurgle's, like, um, their theme, their thematic elements. They're not going to alter the character of the faction in a way that I think would hurt them in turning into something they're not. Like, it's not going to turn them into a bow faction. Because they shouldn't be a bow faction. But giving them at least just a cheap uh, source of range output, like a cheap archer unit, would at the very least give, like do a ton in terms of, first of all, it helped them against large stuff. Um, it would also help them counter fire other range, um, not like super effectively, but just them having something would just be nice. And also gives your units something that, infantry units, something to actually hold for that can actually deal some decent damage. So to me, while also having the flavor of just being like marked um, on gores. So I think that would be fine. I think that'd be totally fine. And I would actually be really beneficial. Um, because you don't need everything in the DLC to be some big flashy monster like a toe dragon or something like that, right? You can have just some like really basic ass shit that's actually really, really still really nice for the faction in terms of like its practical uh, implications, right? For example, from the, where are you, Kislev? Uh, so they brought in, in the update, they brought in Frostworms, and they brought in Kislevite Warriors. So, flashiness-wise, Frostworms got way more flash, it's got way more, way more, uh, more panache, right? It's a big monster, it's got all this, this cool-ass, icy, th like, animations and set and stuff like that. The problem is, Frostworms dog shit, actually, it's actually really bad. I have a video about that, it just struggles to do any damage. Um, but Kislevite Warriors, it's like, a, on paper, it's just like a cheap spirit, a halberd unit, who cares? However, this is like one of the best units in the game, especially, particularly of its type. Um, it's just fantastic for Kislev. Even in campaign, it's fantastic because, like, it just gives you another option of, like, holding infantry that you can do instead of just, like, spamming, uh, Kossars. Especially since it's, like, a tier zero, uh, unit. You can just get it with a level one settlement building. Um, so, yeah. Great unit. Even though it's, on paper, not flashy, it's just really, really nice for you. I think Ungor Raiders, um... Uh, of Nurgle would do a fantastic job of provide, providing that exact sort of thing without um, altering the character of the roster too much to the point where it stops being a Nurgle roster. You know what I mean? So I think that would be fantastic, personally. Um, so yeah, actually, of all these units, outside of the, to the Toad Dragon and uh, uh, Nurgle-marked Ungor Raiders, I think would be like the two best pieces that Nurgle can get, in my opinion. Um, but also the other stuff does awesome, looks awesome, too. So, um, outside of that, as far as, like, the generic, because there's still generic, one generic lord and one generic hero, I think for the generic lord, they're just going to get, like, basically a lord version, like a chaos lord of Nurgle, that's it. They have the chaos sorcerer lord, um, they just don't have the chaos lord. So, yeah, basically just a generic melee combatant. It's going to be basically a souped up version of the exalted hero. And for the uh, hero slot, they're probably going to get a chaos sorcerer hero of Nurgle, because uh, they, all the other factions, the other factions have them, right? Like, Slaanesh has their chaos sorcerer, um... Sinch got their Chaos Sorcerer lore, uh, hero, so Nurgle's going to get theirs, which oddly enough, I don't think is going to be that interesting for um, for Nurgle, but it will be very good for Warriors of Chaos, especially if you're a Colex Sun Eater enjoyer, like myself. Um, awesome, amazing beat stick. His animations can be a bit janky, and he's very vulnerable to range, even with the armor and the missile resistance, because he's such a big model. But if you can now heal him, because they don't have any healing in their uh, hero slot, they have plenty of healing in their lord slot, especially with the Nurgle um, Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle. But in their hero slot, they don't have any healing. But if they get it, now all of a sudden, somebody like Kolik Sun Eater, you can uh, heal him really well, and he can just be amazing. Even like Archeon, like if you want to just take like, I don't know, just take like Searing Doom for some damage, or like Burning Head, and then the rest of your magic, you just focus on healing, you can actually uh, be really nice for him. He's already really strong. Um, I imagine he's going to get even better with uh, healing support. Um, yeah, Wars of Chaos is a really good raw, is just really strong right now. And super versatile too, because they just get a bunch of like the other Chaos Mono God stuff. And giving them healing in the hero slot could really just break them open and make them really even stronger. So yeah, um, yeah. Oddly enough, like some people might even just be most excited not for like Nurgle it's themselves getting a DLC, but for Warriors of Chaos getting access to a Nurgle caster. But uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I've got for Nurgle. Hopefully, you guys found that interesting. Um, if you guys did find it interesting, hopefully uh, you can like the video, maybe sub to the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Really, really does help. Um, if you can do that, and also, uh, we had our Empire, uh, video focusing on them, a lot of people seemed to really like it, um, it did way better than I thought it would, because I was worried, because, like, I was planning, like, I wanted to say, hey, let me get my tier list videos out last week, 
And then this week I'll do the uh, speculation videos because the DLC is supposed to come out in April. Usually it's going to come out later in the month. Like it's probably going to be in like third or fourth week of April. But then it turns out, I don't know, maybe like in their whatever new thing they have for the creator program, they told some of the big content creators, hey, put out some DLC speculation stuff. We got something coming soon. Because like all, I saw all of a sudden, I saw last week, everybody, and like everybody and their grandma and their cousin, whoever, their fucking dog is posting videos about uh, the DLC. So I was worried I was getting a bit content, cuck, content cucked here. But um... The Empire video actually did well, uh, so I was really happy to see that, and also there's a lot of like cool discussion in there too, so hopefully, you know, you guys like this video similarly to the Empire video, and the next one obviously is going to be Dwarves, that's going to be coming out probably in one or two days from now, uh, whenever this one's released, which should be on uh, Tuesday, but um, yeah, I will see you guys later, and uh, take care, stay tuned if you want to see that uh, Dwarf video, alright, later.